is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know If I, let figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Okay, the sun's out for once this week. It's gonna be a good day, I can feel it. I can feel it, it's gonna be a good day. Good morning, happy Thursday. Today's gonna be a long day. I'm actually gonna be here till about seven at night because, don't there be light? Um, because tonight at 5 p.m. we have an emergency third grade meeting to try to Talk to parents, see what we can do to help get these grades up. We're not doing too hard. I mean, not just third grade, the school, and then not just the school, the entire district. And let's be real, not just the district, everyone, because there's a pandemic going on. So yeah, kids are struggling. But anyway, we have that, and then we have a family ELA night that I'm gonna help coordinate and whatnot. So, so yeah, and then kids should be in any minute. And this week's story is Stone Soup, the real story of Stone Soup. So one of my favorite stories, I feel like I say that every week, but third grade just has some really good stories. We're working on point of view. So this is my group B kids, and we're just gonna read the story and go over all the things, and I'm gonna set you down so you can watch. Yeah. Three, two, one. 
point of view of the narrator and the character. I can't compare my point of view to the narrator's and the character's. about that story, about the soldier. And then the soldier's trick, some stingy. Stingy means you want to keep everything for yourself. Mine, can't touch it. Mine, okay? And isn't that how the people were with the food? Oh, we don't have any food, I'm so hungry. Meanwhile, they had it under their beds, in their closet, they were hiding it. They're saying, mine, they're being stingy. But So I know that we don't say the word stupid at school, okay? It's not a bad word, but it's a mean word, and we don't call people that. Because it is in the story, we can say it during the story. Even with three of them, I did most of the work, and I kept the hardest job for last. Even with three of them, I did most of the work, and I kept the hardest job for last. So hold up. He's saying his brothers or what? Useless, lazy, lazy. How does he describe himself? He's doing, he's doing most of the work. So he's if he's doing the hardest job, if he's working the hardest, he's a, uh, a hard worker. A hard worker. He's saying he's a hard worker. Um, excuse me, what is he doing? Uh, uh, baby. He's just lying there. <laughs> so do these boys look lazy? Uh, no. They're working pretty hard catching all the fish. Who looks lazy here? No. <laughs> exactly. But would we know that if we could? the pictures? No. No, because this book is in the point of view. Oh, I need to... Let me grab this. Whose point of view are we looking at here? Who's telling the story? Hmm? Yeah, this person's telling the story. He is the narrator. So when we are reading it, we're reading the narrator's thoughts, what he thinks, and his opinion. Okay? So the narrator's point of view is different from the picture. That's why it's so important, because if we couldn't see the picture, we would think, wow, he must be working really hard. These three brothers, they're lazy and kind of stupid, I guess. That's got to be rough. But then we look at the picture, and it's the opposite. It's totally different. So that's where we are comparing our point of view, which is the pictures, from the narrators, which is the lazy guy, and the characters. Right? So that's why we're comparing our point of view with his. So, let's go ahead and... Oh, that's a really good idea. How are we supposed to move lunch, I ask, with a hole in the ground? Uh -oh. And those crazy boys must have got our message. No sooner had those words left my mouth than they started digging a hole in the sandy beach. What are you doing, I ask? Cooking lunch, of course, said Kawhi. So when I read, I ask myself questions. And I try to answer them to check to see if I understood what I just read. So one question that I ask myself during this part is, what do the boys plan to do with a hole in the sand? Yeah, they need to pull hot water. Wait, I know they put, uh, that, what's it called? The leaves thing? And put it around, and maybe dump the water in it, and you can, maybe can cook. So it kind of seals it? Yeah. Yeah. But here's my thing. At first, what did the narrator think? I don't like saying it, but you do it. Yeah. Uh, we could say dull, but that was a little dull. Thought, wow, they really thought that I meant it. That's how woo, that they are. Okay? But then, my thing is, if the boys are really that dull, uh, how would they know to line it with banana leaves to build a hole with a fire next to it? Wait, man, it seems like they got a plan. Yeah, they got a kind of plan going. If they were just listening to him, they would have just dug the hole and been like, done. Again, the point of view we are looking at, are we looking at the three brothers' point of view?
about the education. Uh, All he wants is break. Okay, hey, how we doing? How we doing? There are clues that let us know that he thinks this. What does he say in the story that lets us know that he thinks this? But no, I need some evidence. So I'm gonna, this is where I take things from the story and put them here to prove that he thinks this. So look at this, uh, that page, and find something that he says that we can take out that shows that. Look at the first page. Find something that he says that proves he thinks the boys are crazy. No, 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 the page you're on. No, nope, we're not there. That one. No, so now you're gonna look at that page and tell me what he says that we can use for a clue, for evidence up there. Read the page. They listen to it and then he says something. Listen to it and says, this is a fish stone. And then what does he say? No, we're missing one. Those quotations mean that he said that. Those are evidence things that we need. Okay, so we're gonna take that. Let's, while we're on this, let's look and see if we can find clue number two. Read it to me as I write. What does he say? Because he says this, and because we take it directly out of the book, because are these our, are these our words, or are these his words? His, his words. His words. Because they're his words, we didn't say them, what do we have to put around this? Um, quotations. Okay, so I put quotations where he started, and I put quotations where he ended. Thank you. Okay, now there's another thing we have to add. Because these are not our words and we're writing them, we need to reference our writing. So, I'm going to add parentheses right here, and I need to write the page number. That way if someone says, hold up, where did you get this? Where did he say that? I don't remember. Then you put in the page number, they can go and see too. And this is also proof. Hey, I didn't say this, someone else did, and it's on this page. So what page did we find that on? We're on page 284. 284. So, worry that the stones might burn like potatoes. Wait, so then, so now, what does he think about the stone soup? About potatoes. About potatoes. He's comparing stones to potatoes. So he definitely <laughs> thinks the soup's gonna work now. Yeah. He's been convinced. On the page, and then we're going to line up. We are just about done with reading. We're going to wrap it up and then go into math. This is kind of my more squirrely group, uh, if we can't really tell. So it's definitely a challenge. We've actually already read this story completely once before, but online. So it's amazing to see the difference of like, this is like a new story to them. This is like, they've never even heard this story before. And we've already read it. So that's distance learning, distance teaching. So I think I had my first kid with <coughs> today, uh, potentially. He, granted, to get into school, you have to have a temperature check. They're supposed to fill out a survey saying if they have any of the symptoms and then they are allowed in. Um, came this morning, was eating breakfast and was like, Blair, I feel weak. And I'm like, are, are, are we just saying things or do we actually feel this? And he's normally one that's like, yeah, I didn't sleep last night. Like, I'm a cool kid. I do like everything cool, like, huh. So for him to say that he felt weak was like, big deal. And then he said that he had a cough and someone's like, yeah, I heard him coughing outside. So immediately out of here and like disinfected everything, hand sanitizer all around. So we'll see. Luckily it was within the first like 15 minutes of class and I know 15 minutes is like the thing. So we'll see and hope for the best. But I also just really didn't want to freak any of the kids out. So now my camera's gonna die. So I don't know how much longer this is gonna last. Um, if not, we at least got through reading. And thanks for coming to my classroom and teaching me today. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye.